Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, we have another early impression that, uh, you know, if you've been following my channel, you know a couple things. You know that number one, I'm very proud of the fact that I can say everything that is in my collection, I paid for, except for the decants and like, for example, one of my subscribers sent me a bottle for the first time. Heinke sent me this. And there you go, I just dropped it. Um, luckily, it it's, doesn't stay true to his name because this is Explosion Explosive. So that would have been bad. But, um, you know, other than stuff like that that's been sent to me by friends, I would consider the people in the community that I've made these acquaintances with friends at this point, especially some of you that's been there from the beginning. Um, you know that I'm very proud of the fact that I've accumulated all this for myself. No brands have sent me anything except for uh, a Riz Ladori Russian Adam sent me some samples, beautiful samples, uh, and also some raw materials, which was very kind of him. One of the kindest gifts anyone's ever given me, ever. But outside of that, you know that I'm proud of the fact that I purchased all this with my own money. And I'm also proud of the fact that I can stand on my two feet and say whatever I want because I have no obligations to satisfy a brand manager or whatever it is. It is kind of humorous when just normal, everyday people, fragrance, you know, uh, content, uh, you know, people who watch this kind of content who are just fragrance lovers get offended at some of the things that I say. I think it's because they're not used to negative reviews. You know, everybody loves everything nowadays because they want more free stuff so they have to love everything and when you come across someone like me who is not that politically correct when it comes to saying the right thing um you know when other people don't like something they say oh this is fantastic but it's just not for me oh this is just you know it's just such great work but it's just not for me i don't say that i say shite is shite and people don't like that um, they're not used to hearing that. It offends them. Go, go pull up my Symphonium video and go look at the comment that one of the guys left me. He left two comments on that video. Like, me not liking Symphonium really struck a nerve with him. Like, it offended him somehow. That kind of stuff just cracks me up. But I also realize that I am human, and I do make mistakes, and I have a group of people, uh very small group of people that I trust. And, you know, whenever something is wrong, I am the first to step up and say that I said something wrong. And one of the people who I really trust informed me that on my video yesterday when I said that Pierre Bourdon and Jean-Claude Elena were the only two pupils of Edmund Rudnitska, that that was actually incorrect because his son, Michael Rudnitska, was technically a pupil of his. And this is 100% true. Uh, and, you know, I don't know Michael Rudnitska's work, so I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage there on that front. Uh, and for some reason, when I think about a blood, like, you know, someone's son, like his, his flesh and blood, right? I don't think of a pupil in that sense because a father is always training a son, always training a daughter to, to be better at life. But I guess when a master perfumer like Edmund Rudnitska passes that knowledge down to his son, then his son is technically a pupil now. He's not approaching his father in the fatherly sense. He's approaching him as master perfumer Edmund Rudnitska and learning everything from him. So uh, I have to know, I have to get to know Michael Rudnitska's work because I don't know it. I don't think I've smelled anything from him, to be honest with you. Um, so maybe the Frederick Mall that he did, I'll look into, but, uh, I did want to put a little asterisk next to what I said yesterday that Pierre Bourdon and Jean-Claude Elena were the only two pupils of Edmund Rudnitska because technically that's not true because you have to include his son. Uh, so there's that. And, uh, so let's talk about, speaking of kindness from the community and people I trust and stuff like that, it, it did kind of shock me, you know, when I first started my channel. When I had very few subscribers, very few, 20, 30, 40 subscribers, there was one person in particular that came forward and said, I want to send you some stuff. I was not expecting that. Actually, I wasn't even expecting it when I had a thousand subscribers or whatever it is. It just wasn't something that I expected the average person to do, especially with something like Erosia Dove. So this was sent to me by 
D.L. Qualia is who he goes by. Uh, and he basically did a beautiful thing because he sent me these uh, and he said, do whatever you want with them. Say whatever you want. Don't, you know, don't say nice things about them because I sent them to you. Don't even review them if you don't want to. Just, here you go. Review them if you want. If not, here's some stuff I haven't seen you talk about. I think you would want to get your nose on. Beautiful human being. Uh, and he, of course, sent them to me. He paid the postage. He, all that good stuff. And that really touched me because at that point, you know, 20, 30, 40 subscribers, you're, you're thinking to yourself, wow, um, that's, that, that was my first interaction with what the community could be. Uh, and the, I, I say that this is like a community of vintage men and women because you run into people that you are not used to running into in, in everyday life. You know, that, that mindset of forget everyone else, it's all about me, uh, is gone in this community. There's so many kind-hearted, generous people, not just with their juice, but also with their time and knowledge and all that good stuff. So, uh, I wanted to say that before we get into the video. This is a big thank you to D. L. Qualia. He sent me this decant of a very expensive fragrance. This is... Um, this is high, this is top-notch juice we're talking about here. We're not talking about uh, drugstore fragrance. We're talking about a Roja Dove. And so this is Herod's Pour Homme. Uh, it came out in 2019. And again, it's a Herod's exclusive and it's a Roja Dove. So it's very expensive. I never would have been able to get my nose on this. And this is the first time I've given it a full wear. We are about seven and a half hours into my wear today. And I've worn this to bed before. As you can see, I put a pretty good dent in the decant. All right, so I haven't completely tapped it, but I put a pretty good dent in the decant. And so this fragrance is basically his take on a spicy, citrusy fragrance. Let me tell you the notes. Lemon, bergamot, lime, orange, bitter orange. Five citruses immediately. And it is very citrusy when you first spray you instantly get this heavy lemony vibe. And then on top of that, there's a note called Litsea uh, Kubiba. And Litsea Kubiba is this, it's also known I think as Mei Chang. It's an evergreen type of shrub that's native to China, okay? So obviously an American like me, how, how in the world would you ever smell something like that? But it also grows, I guess, in uh, Taiwan, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Cambodia, and stuff like that. But the local people call it mountain pepper. And what's interesting is, is that it produces this fruit, which is processed, and becomes this lemony smelling essential oil. The leaf can also be extracted, but it's considered lower quality than the fruit itself. And there's these little white flowers that grow off of this evergreen sh shrub. I guess it grows about five to 12 meters high. And in, 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 um, and in fact, they even use the timber, I guess, for furniture and crafts and stuff like that. And then other parts of the plant is made for medicine. I've seen this note before in a couple other fragrances. So this fragrance instantly tries to grab your attention with, with something very modern and something that as a Western nose, okay, unless you're a perfumer that knows four or 500 different ingredients, thousands of ingredients, you're not going to know uh, Litsia Kubiba, right? Uh, but it, it has this lemony floral smell in the opening. And on top of the floral smell, you're hit with lavender, which is probably the most masculine leaning of all of the notes in the opening. Lavender and thyme. So it's slightly aromatic. It's very lemony. I mean, whenever you start out with this, you're gonna smell a huge dose of bergamot and you're gonna smell a huge dose of citruses and, and stuff like that, right? Extremely pleasant floral opening as well. Almost leans feminine, even when you first spray, before the rest of the ingredients take hold, because this is a Roja Dove, like many Roja Doves, I've talked about this before, he has a signature floral heart, and you catch this floral heart amongst many of his fragrances. So there's Geranium, there's May Rose, there's Narrowly, 
There's jasmine from grass, which is the best type of jasmine, the, the most sought after jasmine in my mind. Ylang Ylang and violet, and Roja loves violet. And you do get a little bit of this floral, violety, citrusy, you know, if you weren't someone who who was really into fragrances, if you're just some if you're just like a bystander and you were out and about in Herod's and let's say you had a you had a fat bank account and money didn't matter to you and you smelled this, you would probably say, "Wow, this is pleasant. I could wear this to a board meeting. I could wear this to a golf outing. I could wear this anywhere, you know, to my kids' birthday parties." This is very versatile unoffensive, unassuming, and it adds a little bit of intrigue. There's a little bit of, almost like a little bit of, huh, I've never smelled that before because that Litsea Kubiba is a note that, you know, you don't see every day. It's not like the normal pink pepper lavender vetiver, you know, it's something different. It's exotic to Western noses, right? So you get this floral, citruses, and then, as with most rosas, Really, where I start enjoying this fragrance, I've got about, like I said, a seven and a half hour dry down here. The dry down is my the, my favorite part of the fragrance. The, spi the spicy, citrusy opening, floral opening. Mm. I, I, I mentioned yesterday, if, you were, if you're somebody who follows my channel, you know that I'm a huge fan of vintage fragrances, as is Roja Dove. And yesterday I wore this. Francesco Smalto Porom. And this is an aromatic fougere uh, with a very sharp anise opening. And I love that sharpness. I love the uh, sharpness in the anise uh, in aromatic fougeres. Azaro Porom did something very similar. But we're going back to the 1980s, right? That's sharp. That's bracing. That's classic masculine, right? Old school almost. But I like that. This is the opposite of that. This is Roja Dove saying, let's make an aromatic fougere that is not so aromatic, maybe slightly hints at aromatic because of the, the time, but is mostly citrusy floral for the first couple hours. And the citruses really last here. Whatever modifier they're using, this is not citruses where you spray and the citrus hits you at first and then it's gone. They extend the citruses somehow. And where I really start to enjoy it though is about two and a half to three hours. There's another note that Roja is in love with and I couldn't agree more. In fact, Russian Adam sent some to me and I talked about it in my 50 ingredient breakdown that I did a couple videos back. Go watch that if you haven't watched that video. It is a little bit long, but I go ingredient by ingredient and smell it and talk a little bit about it, and that's labdanum. And labdanum is one of the most beautiful resins to me because labdanum can be worn almost alone. I actually got some of the labdanum resin on my fingers when I was pulling the... It's so sticky. If you go watch my video, when I pull the labdanum out and I actually open the, the little lid, it's like there's spider webs still stuck to the lid. It's so sticky, right? And if you get some on your hands, you just smell this most beautiful labdanum and it lasts and lasts and lasts and lasts and it's such a gorgeous deep ingredient and that's in the base of this. So there's labdanum, there's synthetic cashmere wood, which roja has been famous for playing with in some of his concoctions. It takes something that could potentially start to smell sharp, which I, again, I like. I'm of two minds because I like stuff like this. I like stuff like Azaro Porom. I like stuff like Derek um, from Orlain. I like, you know, aromatic fougeres like, um, there's just, there's so, there's so many. I, Gucci Nobile I wore the other day. That's a sharp, beautiful aromatic fougere with this tobacco. I like that stuff. And this rounds everything off. It sands all the corners down. You know, if there's a sharp corner, it just sands it down and rounds it out. Everything is luxury. Everything's smooth. Nothing is offensive. And even though there's probably a lot of synthetics in this, it's blended 
to perfection, as everyone loves to say about Roja's fragrances. And it is true here. I mean, you're paying whatever you're paying. This is probably a five, six, seven, eight hundred dollar fragrance. I have no idea the pricing, but I know it's got to be expensive. It's a Herod's exclusive, so they're not selling it for cheap. You want it, you're expecting to get something special. Uh, so the base is labdanum, galbanum, patchouli. I like my galbanum in the top, to be honest with you, but they have it in the base here. And it just makes it, it makes, it almost, it's almost like dropping an aromatic fougere leaf that just like slowly falls its way to the floor. The greenness from the galbanum kind of comes up and catches the greenness from the citruses, the oak moss, uh, patchouli. There is patchouli here, but it's very light. You're not going to smell this and go, wow, that's heavy patchouli from the 1970s. You're not going to smell... Um, you know, Givenchy Gentleman from 1974. No, this is probably some sort of fractional, fractionalated patchouli, patchoula, whatever they call it. I don't know what they call it. It's probably something that's, you know, very tamped down. You're not going to get that earthy, medicinal, green patchouli. This is very toned down just to add some depth. It's there for base because this is really a summer citrus spring fragrance with a little bit of a rosia heavy base, which makes it nice. It makes it pleasant. Um, there's also vanilla and iris in the base. So your nose constantly smells this beautiful irisy, you know, um, fuzziness. It's not iris heavy like Hideous, or it's not iris heavy like um, Dior's, Dior Homme, the original one they used to actually use iris, Tragedy, Dior Homme 2020, but... You know the drill. Um, it's not iris heavy like those kind of fragrances. And then there's another ingredient in the base, which is very important to this compound, I think. And that's an ingredient called Ambra Rome. Ambra Rome. And Ambra Rome, this is Ambra Rome Absolute. Now, Roja has used this in a couple other material, other um, fragrances. There is also a Fragrantica says there's a note of Ambra Rome in a perfume that I am very familiar with, and that is Paris Monte Carlo's Rose de Taif. This is supposedly has Ambra Rome in the base. Uh, and basically what Ambra Rome is, is it's a it is a ambergris ambergris substitute, okay? It's an ambergris substitute that is created out of a gum resin. So remember, labdanum is a resin, and this amber rome is a, is, is a creation out of a gum resin that is supposed to replace ambergris. So if, you, if you're putting together, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, basically what I'm saying is there's some unique materials in the top that make you go, okay, that's interesting. Let, let's say a kubiba uh, is, a, is a shrub probably no one knows about. There's some musk in the base. There's amber rome, which smells different. There, it, he's trying to give the impression, okay, that you're smelling something absolutely amazing, right? You're smelling something that is unheard of. You have to go to Herod's and buy your Herod's Pour Homme Roja Dove for $750 because this is just the most amazing, unique thing you've ever smelled. Unfortunately, it doesn't do it for me. Um, I mean, it does it for me in the fact that I like it, but if I'm spending $700 on a Roja, which I did do, I got, it, I got one discounted, I actually spent more than that on Great Britain. Great Britain does something for me it moves me in a way that this doesn't. Um, Great Britain has that Russian leather, uh, that, you know, birch tar, that iris, one of the most beautiful irises in Great Britain. So there are some of his fragrances that you look at and you go, okay, yes, it is worth the money. For me, though, for a pleasant take on an aromatic fougere with round edges, right, that's very easy to wear. No one's going to smell this and go, oh, what are you wearing? I mean, that that's really offensive or no, none of that. They're going to smell this and they're going to think, hmm, pleasant. Maybe even you picked up your wife's 
uh, perfume by accident this morning and sprayed it. Um, it has that floral, but it's still a, a fougere vibe. This is definitely his take on a citrusy fougere uh, with, with round corners. So pros and cons. The pro about this is, yes, there is some unique aspects to it. Uh, you don't see fragrances every day with some of the, let's say, a Kubiba and Amber Rome Absolute. The iris in here in the base is nice. I love labdanum. You can pick out the labdanum. Roja's fragrances are always labdanum heavy. Not always, but a lot of the time labdanum is used, even if just in the base. And if I was creating a fragrance, I would do exactly the same thing, to be honest with you. I love what labdanum does in a fragrance, but this is just too pleasant. It's it's trying to be too much luxury. It's like you bought the, you know, you bought the, I don't know, highest end Mercedes Benz and it has 300 buttons and 290 of them you don't use because you don't need a car that parks itself and you don't need all this stuff. You know, it's there, but you don't, you don't need it. It's trying to do too much to me. Uh, and, and I got more pleasure out of wearing Smalto, Francesco Smalto Por Homme yesterday than I have out of uh, Roja's Herod Por Homme today. And that speaks volumes because this is a fragrance that sold for $10 in the 80s. Now you got to pay over 100 bucks for a bottle. But I would rather buy seven bottles of this than I would one of Herod's Por Homme. That's just my take. Um, and I have a bunch of Roja, so I'm not hating on Roja. In fact, I'm blessed to be able to try this. Again, this goes back to the kindness in the community. But I have to be honest with you guys. And testing this a couple times before bed, wearing it, giving it a full wear today, I think I have it pretty much nailed down. And so I feel comfortable doing this review. Don't write it off. Test it for yourself. See if what I'm saying holds true for you. Um... You know, if you're just looking for a pleasant, maybe workplace scent, this would be a perfect workplace scent. But do I want to spend that kind of money on a workplace scent that people just think is pleasant? No. I want to spend that kind of money on a scent that just completely blows my socks off, which Great Britain does, Queer de Russi does, Bellamy does. You know, those kind of fragrances that, you know, I talk about all the time that I know and love. Um... So this is a pass for me. I mean, I would not hunt down a bottle of this. Um, if I was going to spend this kind of money, I would maybe spend even a little bit more and get um, PDLN number three, Parfum de la Nuit number three that Roja does. That reminds me very much of Eau de Hermes. But then again, I would just wear my Eau de Hermes. I, I just love Eau de Hermes that much. I would just rather wear the original than Roja's take on it even. Um, so anyways, that's that's kind of my take. I hope this sheds some light on a fragrance. I don't hear anyone talk about. Um, if you go to Parfumo, there's only like one or two. Um, there's only like one or two reviews on it. If you go to Fragrantica, I think there's more. There's a couple of them on Fragrantica. Um, but it's it's... It is, um, just think about a modern, like Roja's take on a fougere with some vetiver. Um, if you're a fan of some of his easier work to digest, like if you're a fan of Scandal, Scandal is kind of his take on Chanel's Pour Monsieur to me, or YSL Pour Homme. If you're a fan of something like Scandal, and this is like your holy grail fragrance, I would urge you to check out Herod's Pour, Pour, Pour Um, But if you're like me, and you like the dirty animalics, um, you know, you're a fan of Castorium, you love Antaeus, that kind of stuff, this is probably not going to move you. You might appreciate it for its, for its quality, and for its um, pleasantness. I mean, when you say something is just pleasant or it's, it's nice, that's what I would say about this fragrance. It's nice. 
Rojan does all these videos, if you go watch him, where he says, the worst thing someone can say about my work is, it's nice. This is kind of just nice. So, anyways, that's my take on it. I hope you guys appreciate it. I love seeing your faces in the comments. Please leave me a message below. Tell me what you think if you've tested this one. Uh, if you agree, disagree, you know, whatever you want to talk about. I love the comments. I love the interaction. I learned so much from you guys. Um, a like, a subscription always helps. It helps with the algorithm. It helps get exposure. It helps, you know, helps the eyeballs find me. The people who are out there who are like-minded, who are in our little tribe, who think like us, you know, it helps us connect, I would say. If you leave a like in a, in a subscription, subscribe and a like and a comment, all that stuff, it just helps with the algorithm. It helps with the exposure. Um, other than that, obviously, if you don't want to, I, I, I am all for that. Watch the video. Just watching it, I appreciate it. I appreciate every single one of my subscribers. It's, um, it's been a very interesting journey over the last six months, but I've loved every second of it. And, uh, so I've got more videos to come, but, uh, this is the first impression of Herod's Poor Home. Thanks to my good friend, D.L. Qualia. Thank you, buddy. I haven't seen you in the comments. I hope to see you on the bot on the video on this one. So cheers, guys. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.